Good morning. It's good to see those that I'm able to see this morning. I know we're um, still having to um, adapt and do do things that are not desirable for us this morning, but um, I hope and pray that we will, as we seek to worship God, that we will all focus uh, the best we can on God and His Word and honor Him above all in everything that we do. A few weeks ago, we had a lesson on... Genesis chapter 1, and really we talked about the beginning, right? Going back to the beginning and looking at, at God's creation, His wonderful and beautiful creation that He had. And, and we focused on, we began with the foundational verse of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so that's a very powerful verse, a very important verse, right? If that verse, if that verse is not true... Right? Then nothing else of the Bible we can, we can hang on to. We don't know anything, by the way. If we've got the, the it, it all begins with this foundational verse that in the beginning, God, God has always been there. And in the beginning of time, as we know it, God created the heavens and the earth. A very powerful verse. And we went back and looked at Genesis chapter 1, and we looked at the six days of creation, if you remember, that Jesus, excuse me, that God said in six days... Okay, he created the heavens, created everything that we know. And so we understand that the, the Bible is inspired, the scriptures are inspired, and so when they say that, that God created things in six days, that's exactly what he did in six days, and we believe that to be the truth. Well, one of the things in, in, in looking at Genesis chapter 1 is looking at the pinnacle, as we call it, of God's creation. And that's mankind, right? And, and, that's, and that's very important that we... And so we want to go back and look at uh, chapter 1, verses 26 and 27 to kind of give us a springboard this morning of what we want to talk about. Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27. The New Revised Standard Version says, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Okay, I highlighted in bold... Male and female, He created them. I want us to focus on that this morning because there's been a lot of perversion of God's creation by man. Okay? Attempt to pervert God's Word in this very important passage. We're all aware of now of this idea of gender identity. And it's, it's, it's running rampant everywhere. And I tell you what, I, I'm just, it hurts me to have to say these things this morning and to read some of these things, but I, I want us to do it just to make sure that you are aware of what's going on. I got this information and I had to look this up. Uh, I got this information from a website called Teen Talk, and that scares me even more because these are the type of subjects and things that teenagers, that they're trying to talk with teenagers about. But the idea of gender identity, listen to what this, this is an excerpt directly from the website, the very first page of this. Gender identity is how a person feels and who they know themselves to be when it comes to their gender. There are more than two genders, even though in our society the genders that are most recognized are male and female, called the gender binary, and usually is based on someone's anatomy, the genitals they were born with. This is gender assignment, and it is based on an assumption 
that someone's genitals match their gender. However, gender isn't about someone's anatomy. It is about who they know themselves to be. And I stop there in that. It goes on to talk about many different gender identities. And the way they say it is including male, female, transgender, gender neutral, non-binary, agender, pangender, gender queer, two-spirit, three-gender, on and so forth, and any combination of all of these. There are many more gender identities than we've listed. Gender can be complex and people are defining themselves in new and different ways as we gain a deeper understanding of identities. Some terms may have different things, excuse me, may mean different things to different people. There are certain terms some folks may not like to use or call themselves, and some terms that they may like to use or call themselves. If you're not sure what to call a person, it's best to ask the person what they would like to be called. It is always up to us to decide how we identify and how we express our gender. However, you decide or identify deserves to be respected and supported. I want to tell you something, brethren. What basically people are trying to say is that it doesn't matter what God's created. We're going to express ourselves and define ourselves any way we want to. Whatever feels like the right thing to do, we're going to do it. And we talked about this in the beginning a few weeks ago. We talked about this. It started with them trying to destroy the first verse of the Bible. And if you can, you can come to, man can decide that, well, we, were, uh, we evolved and we've done this and, and there's no use, there's no God, there's nothing, then guess what? He can decide what he's going to be. Man's going to decide for himself what gender that he is. Someone says, well, that's, that's far off. You know, that's, that's not close to home, is it? You know, it, it's not really hitting us right now. Is it? Well, I got some breaking news for you. <laughs> this past week, some things have happened. Uh, this past week, one of the things that... Well, this one actually is not from this past. The first one is not this past week, but I'm getting there in just a minute. But in September 8, 2019, BBC, the British Broadcasting Company, had films that teach children of at least a hundred genders or more. They had films made to teach children that there are at least a hundred genders or more, and they're showing them. So people as young as nine years old. But you think about that. So it says, oh, yeah, but that's in Britain, right? That's the British broadcast. It's a good thing it's not in the U.S. of A., right? Nothing's happening here. Well, now we're going this past week. That's what I was trying to get to. January the 4th, 2021. Our, one of our representatives, Emmanuel Cleaver, Democrat from Missouri... Altered, he was asked to deliver the opening prayer in the 117th Congress on Sunday. He altered the traditional ending of the prayer with just saying amen by saying amen and a woman. And the whole purpose of that was to show that we're inclusion, the inclusion there and all of the things there that's going on and something to go along with that, January 6, 2021, this year, our US, uh, the U.S. House adopted gender-neutral language for rules documents. What that means is, brethren, they're no longer going to say he and she, male and female, okay, man and woman. They're not going to say... Uh, himself and herself, they're going to say themselves, or they, they're going to, they're going to, they're, they're taking out any terms 
that deal with gender, male or female. These are things that have happened this past week. I want you to think about that. I want you to let that sink in. So basically what United States, our house, is saying that, is that in order to include everyone, we've got to get out of this idea of male and female. In other words, we're not going to respect God's creation. God made them male and female, but we're going to decide, you know what, we're going to call it anything we want to. We want to include everyone. Some people, if you don't feel like this, even though this is the way you're created, you don't feel like this, then you have a right and you deserve this other, whatever you want. Well, once again, from the beginning, God made them male and female. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, we've already looked at that. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 2, once again, listen to what it says. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them, and named them humankind when they were created. Someone says, yeah, but that's old, outdated stuff, right? That's back in Genesis. We don't, we don't go back there. Man, that was a long time ago. Someone says, that, was, that could have been 55, 6,000 years ago. That's not right. Someone says, well, you know, Jesus taught love, and we're to love one another. What did Jesus think about this? Jesus would have never said that. Well, let's look and see what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 19, in verses 4 through 6, someone asked him, is it lawful for you to divorce your wife for any cause? You remember that? He answered, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. Jesus said, From the beginning, God made them male and female. Now why did he bring that up? Why did he say that? They asked him, Is it lawful for you? For a man to divorce his wife for any cause. Why didn't he just come out and just answer the question? Why did he go back to this? Because from the beginning, God made them male and female. Two genders. That's it. There's not 62, 64, 72, or over 100. There's male and female. That's the way God created from the beginning. Mark chapter 10, Mark's account of Jesus. This is what Jesus says. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. So, the fabric of our society, I don't have to tell you, is unraveling. And if we're going to start, stop, if we're going to stop the trend, we must start with the home. We must start with the beginning, what God made. God made male and female. Let's go back now to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 beginning. And let's look at God's design for the home. God's design for the home. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to all the birds of the heavens, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, now listen, there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man. And while he slept, took one of his ribs 
and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This is God's design for the home from the beginning. The creation was good, as we looked at in chapter 1. But it was not good, he says, God says it was not good for man to be alone. So God created the woman and then instituted marriage for that purpose. So the man would not have to be alone. The male that God created, it's not good for him to be alone. So God made a female, okay, female fit for him. This is God's creation. God's design for marriage. And a lot of these things here that I wanted, I wanted to hit on these because they're important. We want to look at these. God's design for marriage, first of all, it's for companionship. As he said, it's not good for the man to be alone. Genesis 2 and verse 18. God gave us all desires, certain things. And so another purpose or design of marriage, the purpose of the marriage is to fulfill the sexual desire that God gave us. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 2, Proverbs 6, 18 through 21. It's to fulfill sexual desire to prevent fornication. What do we have? What do we have running rampant in our society today? People that are just going out and doing what they want to do, sleeping with whoever they want to sleep with, doing whatever they want to do. They're fulfilling their desires. God gave us the way to fulfill our desires through marriage. God's design for marriage is also to propagate the human race. Genesis 1 and verse 28. God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Bless them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Now I don't want to have to get graphic here this morning, but the male and the female are made for one another. God's creation designed them to fit with one another. And there's a functionality there. And it's the only way that, to propagate the human race. It will not work with a male and a male. Or a female and a female. God made a male and a female to be together. God's design for marriage. And the last one here is one that I've added. I would really, we don't talk about a whole lot, but the more I read and study about it, this is very important. God's design for marriage and the family is also to teach us about the church and the God family. It helps us understand roles. It helps us understand authority. It helps us understand the way God wants us to work together in the church family, as well as how the God family or the Godhead works together. We understand that through the family relationship. We gain a better understanding through the family relationship. God's design for marriage, a beautiful, wonderful thing. The nature of the home... Once again, it's to be between a male and a female. I hate to have to keep harping on that, but you know what? That's what we're having to say today because people out in the world say, you know what, it could be between anybody you want it to be. And that's not the way God intended for it to be. Those involved are to leave their father and their mother and to cleave to one another. It's to be a lifelong commitment.
God's Word is also there on those who are eligible for marriage. And I had to put number one in there again to make sure everybody understands. Only those eligible for marriage is one male and one female. Okay, let me make sure you understand. This is God's plan. Genesis chapter 2, 18 through 24. It's amazing what can happen if we just decide, you know what? God didn't create anything. God didn't create what We evolved. And guess what? When we evolved, if we evolved and, the, and God didn't create us, then the, we don't have a purpose. Then, then there is no male and female. We just happen to somehow, and we're confused. Everybody's just kind of going and doing what they want to do, and then everything happens, and then anything goes. You know, it comes as a surprise to some to suggest that not everyone has a right to a marriage partner. A male and a male do not have a right to each other. A female and a female do not have a right to each other. But who does have a right? Then, well, obviously one male and one female. So that's what we're talking about. There's those being eligible for marriage. One who has never been married has a right. To be married. One who has been married but whose spouse has died has a right to be married. One who has been married but who has divorced his or her spouse for the cause of fornication has a right to be married. Matthew 19, 9. And one who has been married who has divorced his or her spouse but who seeks to remarry that spouse they divorced. They can be reconciled to one another. 1 Corinthians 7, 10, 11. They have a right to be married. But that's it, brethren. And there's so many problems. There's so many things that are going on out in, out in the world. There's so many. We have tangled the web up so much that there's some, some cases out there you don't have a clue whether or not people have been married five or six times and this and that and, and do this and they've done this and, and you just you can't, you can't untangle it. But that's why we should listen to God. Follow His will. And young people... You better do this right now. You better follow His will now so it doesn't get complicated later and cause a world of hurt. God's plan for the home. So once again, God's Word is authority and truth. Just like God created everything in six literal days, we have laws. He also gave us marriage. He gives us these things. We have standards, and we have the meaning of life because of this. But guess what? Those that decide that man is authority, he decides what's true. There are millions and billions of years. There's lawlessness. There's homosexual behavior, pornography, abortion. The list goes on and on. A hundred genders. We'll just call it whatever we want to call it but that doesn't make it right. We must follow God's wonderful creation. So brethren, so the question is this, what's a Christian, what can a Christian do today? Well, number one is this. We should recognize that we are witnessing moral anarchy. As Western nations abandon all semblance of biblical authority. Brethren, there is nothing more essential to our lives than our manhood and womanhood. Our culture is embracing transgender identity and it's thus uprooting the very structure of our bodily existence. To reject this reality is to embrace chaos. You think it's bad now? You just wait and see what's going to happen in our country. Untold numbers of boys and girls will be harmed by doing this. Most significantly, God is not honored or obeyed. I want you to think about this, this idea of transgender people. The rates of suicide among transgender people show the brokenness of the choice that they're making. 
Paul McHugh, former John Hopkins University psychiatrist in chief, has noted in the Wall Street Journal that the suicide rate among transgender individuals is 20 times higher than in the normal population. Embracing transgender identity at the cultural level does not produce happiness and wholeness. It goes hand in hand with personal confusion and disorder. And that's what happens when we go away from biblical authority. We go away from God creating them male and female. But brethren, the second thing that we should do as Christians is that we should celebrate the beauty of God's creative design. The Christian church, the godly family that we have, should be a festival of happiness. We should rejoice that God in His sovereign wisdom has opened our eyes to see that He made us according to His own image. His perfect design. Manhood and womanhood aren't plan B. God Himself has made us as we are. We are the pinnacle of His creation. God's creative work is undermined across the board today. You know, a secularizing, darkening world seeks to demystify the human body. God and His Word dignify it, showing us that our bodies were made not only for utility, but for worship. Christians celebrate the beauty of the body and of manhood and womanhood, for we see that we owe our form to divine design. I'll tell you who said that. Dr. Owen Strachan said that as president of the Council on Biblical Manhood and Womanhood, professor of theology and church history. Third, we should recommit ourselves to training our children. You see, the bodily differences between men and women are real. They speak to differences in our makeup, specifically designed by our Creator. God made us this way. We are different. In practical form, we must teach these differences to our children. They must see that being a boy or a girl is a matter of God's glory. We have no right to say, you know what, I was born this way, but you know what, this is not a way, I'm not, I'm not really this, I'm going to be something else. That's not giving glory to God. There should be no shame in boys liking boyish things or in girls adopting girlish behaviors. Christians should encourage this kind of awareness. Many parents will find that their children genuinely enjoy being a boy or a girl, a future man or a future woman. We should regularly remind our kids that it was God who made them as they are. We should encourage them to embrace and assume manhood or womanhood. We're just imitating the pattern of wise biblical parents. Remember what David said in 1 Kings chapter 2? We're talking in 1 Kings now. Remember what David said in 1 Kings chapter 2 and verse 2? Be strong to Solomon. Prove yourself a man. He didn't say, well... Figure out what gender you are, and then maybe you can, you can do something with your life. If we do not teach our kids about gender and sexuality, we can be assured that our unbiblical culture will. The culture makers who disobey the scriptures are persuasive forceful and eager to indoctrinate our children. Fathers and mothers 
must recommit themselves to training their children in the scriptural view, scriptural worldview, so that children do not embrace the cultural one. And finally, brethren, Christians can do today is reach out in compassion and call for repentance. You know, those that are confused about what gender they are and have been, and have been indoctrinated with this perversion, they have souls just like we do. They sin just like we do. We must never fail to show mercy to lost people. Transgender individuals will be increasingly common in our neighborhoods and communities. We have a choice. We can sinfully avoid them, or we can seek to reach out to them in kindness and conviction and evangelize them. Conversion for transgender individuals will not be neat and clean. It's going to be messy. It will involve the recognition that sin has corrupted us in every fiber of our being. But the gospel is stronger than sin. Christ's death washes us clean. And Christ's resurrection gives us life. The resurrection raised Christ's spirit even as it renewed his body. We should preach that on the implications of the resurrection for all people, including transgender ones. You remember the, um, I guess it was Walt Disney, the film... When you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. You think about that. People have been charmed by those types of things, of thinking they can be anything they want to be, and leaving God out of everything. The talking animals of Walt Disney films, Pop culture have charmed many of us, but a Disney-fied concept of self-determination has not done us any favors. The culture has offered us a false gospel, one that approves of all we do, leaving us to pursue anything we desire. The scriptural gospel, though, is far better. It makes sense of our humanity. It restores our dignity. It calls us to be men and women who see our body as a gift, a vessel by which we may give glory to our Maker and Redeemer. This may sound too good to be true, but the church exists to make one thing clear. This is no fairy tale. It's the message of scriptures. It's the hope of us all. I thank you for your attention this morning. Hope and pray that we will all go back to the Bible. Go back to the beginning. Go back to God, created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Marriage was given for our good and can produce just as if we will. It will produce just that, produce good, if we will follow God's pattern. Hope and pray you'll think about these things and go back to the Bible. Go back... And think 
We've got to take our stand, brethren, with the Bible. We've got to take our stand against this culture that has, this cancel culture that we have that's decided it's going to take God out of everything. And if you don't, if you don't, we don't like what you're saying, what you're doing, we're just going to get rid of you. You can't do that with God's word. We must follow God. Celebrate the beauty of God's creative design and his marriage. We should recommit ourselves to training our children. But yet, brethren, we should reach out in compassion and call for repentance. Because one day, God's going to bring judgment upon all. And he's going to judge us according to his book. I want to take my stand with God. I know we're not having a, we're not having an invitation song or at this time in our, in our service, but if there's someone at any time that needs to turn to God and needs to obey the gospel, please contact us and we'll do everything in our, in our power to help you out. But I thank you for your attention this morning. We have just a few announcements uh, 